once a mark of freakish deviance, tattoos have now become a commercialized everyday occurrence. They are sometimes ironic, often tacky, but rarely edgy. In today's episode of Unusual As Usual, we're going to look back at the heart-stopping feats of the Scandinavian strongman, aka Rasmus Nielsen. Rasmus Nielsen was born in 1874 in Denmark. Not much is known about this elusive character other than in 1891 he travelled to America aged 17 and worked in the mining camps of California in Alterville as a professional blacksmith. He had a passion for tattoos and is said to have amused himself by getting tattooed most evenings, eventually acquiring tattoos on almost every inch of his body from his neck down. His tattoos included a horse's head across his chest, dragons coiled around his legs and flying swallows on each shoulder. His collection grew so impressive he figured people would probably pay to look at his body. But unfortunately for Nielsen, his timing was poor. The illustrated man was a common attraction during the 1920s and his tattoos, while quite extensive, were not exotic enough to gain him much attention. In order to make himself stand out from the crowd and to distinguish himself from the average tattooed performer, he decided to add unconventional strongman feats to his repertoire. Nielsen was something of a body modification pioneer and although it's not certain when he got his first piercings, a photo from the late 1920s shows Nielsen with a full tattooed body and both nipples pierced. He devised an act practically unheard of at the time and developed a weightlifting act using his piercings. Building up his tolerance to the point that he could lift a 50 pound anvil off the floor using just the rings through his nipples. Armed with a truly unique act, he was billed as the Scandinavian Strongman and spent the next few years working as a sideshow attraction in small fairs where he pushed the pierced weightlifting even further, allegedly increasing his anvils from 50 pounds to 100 and then, as the story goes, even further to 250 pounds, a move which proved quite successful and his popularity began to soar. As the years progressed, so did Nielsen's piercings. He added a nose and tongue piercing. With the current fad of body piercing and tattooing, this act may not seem as impressive as it once did, but at the time was positively shocking. The hammer was attached to an unsharpened hook. The hook was then placed through the piercing in his tongue. As the weight was lifted off the ground, it would stretch his tongue to almost twice in length. The look on his audience's face must have been quite the picture. Nielsen also had his neck pierced, which, like the rest of his piercings, he had stretched and fitted with a large metal ring. There's no documentation or photos of him using this piercing in his act, but it has been rumoured that he may have used it to tow a cart filled with spectators from one side of the stage to the other. He continued to use his natural strength as well as drawing on his knowledge as a blacksmith to perform more traditional feats such as tying raw iron bars in knots and bending horseshoes in half using just his bare hands. In one instance, it was reported that during a live performance, a young man challenged Nielsen's pierced weightlifting ability, claiming that his anvil was hollow and made of wood. Nielsen's response was to invite him on stage and allow him to attempt to lift the anvil. To the delight of the reporters taking pictures, he failed miserably. The resulting publicity boosted Nielsen's popularity and made his pierced weightlifting act an audience favourite leading him to be hired by the Ringling Brothers, Barnum and Bailey Circus in 1936, where he performed for several seasons. In 1939, at the age of 65, he appeared at the New York World's Fair, where he apparently squatted a platform of boulders weighing 3,362 pounds, 1,525 kilograms, 
on a stage in front of a paying audience. A year later, Nielsen travelled to San Francisco to work with Robert Ripley in his Believe It or Not auditorium. Borrowing from the modified marvels and self-made freaks who came before him, he told a fanciful tale of capture and forcible tattooing by savages. These so-called savages were apparently well-travelled as a large Statue of Liberty topped with an eagle and flags covered much of Nielsen's back. He claimed the South Sea Islanders inflicted torture by inserting metal rings through his chest then dangling him from a tree. Of course, this tale is far from the truth, but it captivated audiences across America for the next 10 years, as did his trademark feats of strength. Nielsen continued to work as a blacksmith in California when not traveling with the circus, and was loved by the local residents, especially the children who listened to his stories about life in the circus. He spent a good deal of time visiting children's wards at various hospitals to entertain the kids with his tattoos, feats of strength, and circus stories from the road. On the 6th of July, 1944, thousands of eager fans piled their way into a Ringling Brothers Barnum & Bailey Circus tent in Hartford, Connecticut. But unfortunately, 167 would never make it out alive. The Hartford Circus Fire would go on to be known as one of the worst fire disasters in United States history, killing 167 people and injuring at least 484 more. On the 8th of July, two days after the infamous fire, the Hartford Tribune ran a headline reading, Saved by a Sideshow Freak. The article documented a mother and her young son who witnessed Nielsen's act before the main feature. With the little boy being visibly scared, the two headed home early, hoping to be able to use their unused tickets for the evening performance of The Greatest Show on Earth, narrowly avoiding the fire. The article goes on to read, It gives me goosebumps to think about it. Now, I just want to thank Rasmus Nielsen, the Scandinavian strongman, for saving our lives that day. During his long career, Nielsen was known by many names, he was the Scandinavian strongman, the tattooed wonderman, and the strongman from Denmark. But to his friends, he was simply known as Tough Titty, a kind-hearted man that seemed no one had a bad thing to say about. A 1950s news article wrote, Rasmus Nielsen is probably the best example of a man who was determined to make a freak out of himself. Rasmus Nielsen died in 1957 at the grand old age of 83, leaving his entire estate to the Children's Hospital of San Francisco. According to his autopsy, the cause of death was acute pericarditis, the condition of excessive fluid that quickly accumulates within the heart, interfering with the heart's beating and leading to symptoms of heart failure. Pierce weightlifting is one of the most visually striking acts performed in the sideshow. I actually perform a version of the act on stage myself, which I currently hold three of these for. You can check it out in the Guinness Book of Records. Nielsen turned Pierce weightlifting into a sideshow classic and introduced it to the masses, forever cementing his place in sideshow history. And there we have it, the heart-stopping feats of the Scandinavian strongman, Rasmus Nielsen. How about you? Would you ever get a piercing? Maybe you already have. Let me know in the comment section below. And of course, don't forget to like and subscribe. That's all we've got time for today, but I'll see you all next week. And remember, stay unusual as usual. If you've enjoyed this video, you might like this one too. If you want to see more modified marvels, you can check out the full playlist by clicking here. Don't forget to ring that bell to make sure you don't miss out on next week's video. And if you have any ideas on what the next episode should be about, make sure you add it to the comment section below.